Beginning in 597 BC, 11 years before the destruction of Jerusalem, Nebuchadnezzar enacted the first wave of deportations of citizens of Jerusalem to his Babylonian empire. This first exile was a show of his power, an attempt to squash any spirit of rebellion or independence in Judah. As rebellions continued, Nebuchadnezzar would call for at least two more rounds of deportation. The biblical accounts of the exiles in Babylon follow people like the prophet Ezekiel, whose personal life isn't expounded, and the prophet Daniel, who worked in the courts of Babylon in a privileged class with some of his other Judean captives. However, only a small number of exiles were taken under the wings of Nebuchadnezzar's palace administrators. The fate of the vast majority of Judeans are not chronicled in the Bible. The biblical notes that do exist are from the prophet Jeremiah, who urges the people to settle in Babylon, participate in everyday life and commerce because God's judgment would last a while. Today, it's known that the exiled Judeans took Jeremiah's words to heart. Found ancient texts have been translated coming from a city that was variously called Judatown, the city of the Judeans, or New Jerusalem. This was one of the cities Nebuchadnezzar gave to the exiled Judeans to live in. It may have been an old abandoned city, or perhaps it was new. Either way, the exiles would have been charged with building it up and becoming profitable citizens. At first, their dependence on the Babylonians must have been great. Imagine being taken from your home and placed in a completely different country, economy, society, and environment, and asked to farm and live. Much of your farming knowledge would not apply in this new ecosystem. Your knowledge of edible and medicinal plants would be different, and you'd have to learn a new language and social political structure. Nevertheless, this is exactly what the exiles did. Today, Judean individuals are identified from Babylonian records by their names that incorporate elements of God's proper name. But not all Judeans had those names. Some family records even show children receiving Babylonian names. From the Judeans that can be recognized, there's a clear progression of success from generation to generation, beginning quite humbly with barley as their grown commodity, and then branching out to land, grain, animals, and dates as the generations go on. The fate of all Judeans was not to become successful businessmen. It's quite likely that many Judeans struggled near the bottom of society. Others received the designation of royal merchants, and still others found themselves in the royal records of Babylon as officials of the king himself. There was surely a variety of outcomes for exiled Judeans, but the discovery of these ancient records help us trace the lives of this remnant of Judah. Thanks for watching. Click the playlist on screen now to watch more spotlights. And if you want to read the full article, click the link in the description. You can always go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com for more videos, articles, and resources.